Charlie, is that you? It, it can't be you. Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, we are building once again something Christmas themed as we get ever closer to the day. I was trying to find inspiration and looking for ideas for possible builds. A lot of you had great suggestions about more stuff from A Nightmare Before Christmas. And while yes, I am probably gonna build at least one more thing between now and Christmas, I wanted to try and find something that I haven't pulled from yet and I was kind of fumbling through a bunch of images and of course it kind of struck upon me. Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in 1843 and ever since then there have been tons of revisions and reiterations of it as we moved into the television age. Of course um, there have been movies and TV shows and all kinds of stuff. In 63 Magoo took a stab at it. In 83 Mickey Mouse had his opportunity and there have literally been dozens of other reiterations of the story and retellings and I thought why not make something from that tale. In the story, Scrooge, he's a wealthy guy who kind of has lost his humanity and treats everybody like garbage. As he's going home from his money-making schemes, I guess, uh, he fumbles his keys as he goes to enter into his door. And when he looks back up, he sees the ghost of Jacob Marley on his door knocker. And in almost every film version I've seen of it, it's like this crotchety old man, uh, sometimes with the door knocker hanging off of his ear. Sometimes it's like just superimposed onto a real door knocker. And I kind of wanted to do my own interpretation of it. So here I'm going to make a crotchety old man door knocker Jacob Marley style a Christmas Carol. Sounds like a good idea. Let's try and do it. Let's get to building. So I start by looking up some reference images to go off of. After several searches, the version of A Christmas Carol from 2009 with Jim Carrey will be my door knocker reference. I'm not trying to get exactly like you see in the computer animated movie version of this thing, but it will have something that looks kind of similar, I guess. I almost thought about doing Goofy from the Mickey Mouse version, but decided on this creepy version instead. I don't have a template for this build as it's primary primarily me carving and sculpting foam. To get my oval, I drew one in Microsoft Word and printed it out. I made three layers of them, two 10 millimeter and one six millimeter to make the platform his face sits on. The six millimeter oval will be slightly smaller than the 10 millimeter to give me a middle ridge on my design. All sanded and contact cemented up, the parts are ready to sandwich together. Once you touch these surfaces together, they will permanently stick, so make sure you're putting it where you want it. None of this has to be precise, as you'll only see the side bits with the big head on the front being the main attraction.
For some reason, I decided to carve this build out of foam. This is by no means the easiest way to do this door knocker. Sculpting it in clay would probably be much easier, and I have several different kinds that I could have used. I also could have used one of the bajillion skulls that I've bought for Halloween as a base, but I guess I'm committed to this way at this point. I'll at least have a challenge for this build. I cut out two chunks of the super thick 48 millimeter foam I bought from TNT Cosplay Supply Online and glued them together. You may not have access to this thick foam, so you could glue a bunch of layers of 10 millimeter foam together, or you could find like yoga blocks or something like that if you're wanting to carve it. Or do it out of wood, or a number of other materials. I'm ready to carve my block at this point, so I make a couple of marks on the top and the side surfaces with a paint pen to kind of help me figure out the shape of what I need to remove. Then I begin cutting off chunks to get closer to a humanoid shape. I fully extend out a box cutter blade, throw caution to the wind, and begin Edward Scissor handing the mess out of this foam, or at least that's what it looks like on the video because it's sped up five times faster than it's normal speed. Seriously, go slow, pay attention to your blade, and try to keep your body parts clear of the pulling of that sharp object. You, you can get seriously hurt if you slack up and zone out. Spilt blood on a cursed door knocker may result in devastating consequences. Once the block of foam is closer to resembling a person, I switch over to my rotary tool with the sanding drum on it, put on my respirator, and begin smoothing over the hack job from the previous clip. None of this has to be perfect because I intend on covering most of the surface with clay foam, so no worries. If I take off too much, I can glue another chunk back on, or I can simply just build up more foam clay in the next step. When I get to a place where I like how it looks, I glue the head down to the base. Now I am on to frosting my crotchety old man in a nice layer of foam clay. I'm not gonna lie, at this point I thought that my Jacob Marley kinda looked like Jeff Dunham's old man puppet Walter, the ventriloquist thing, at least that's what I think he looks like at the moment. Focus Thomas. I wet the surface of my carving and dip my clay foam into water too. This will help the two materials to adhere to each other. I push the clay over all of the face and even use it as a gap 
filler for where the head joins the base. I primarily use my hands to help shape the face and the different features, but eventually I pick up some clay sculpting tools to refine some of the lines. When I'm satisfied with playing in the goop, I leave it to sit for about 24 hours to dry. As the clay dries, you may see cracks or a little bit of shrinking here and there. There are a lot of different brands out there of clay foam to choose from. I primarily use either SKS foam clay, like what I'm using in this video, or I also use Cosplay Apprentice's FOMO from time to time. Both are really great products. To redefine it and shape some details back into my sculpt, I put on my respirator, crank up a wood burner to the max, and burn in some wrinkles all over. Over. Protect your lungs while sanding or burning foam. I sneeze foam dust for days if I don't wear a respirator while doing this stuff and I can only imagine the damage it's doing internally, so be safe. This is an old guy, and in most versions of the story, he has glasses on his forehead. So I make a quick pair out of some 4mm and 2mm EVA foam for the lenses. For the stems and the bridge of the glasses, I use some 4mm EVA dowels. The glasses seem a bit small in my opinion, but to be fair, that's kind of the style of the mid-1800s when Dickens wrote this story, so that's what we're going to do. I cut a basic shape in both layers of the foam and cut an inner cut to make the rim in the thinner stuff. They get glued to the forehead and then the frame parts get cut to fit in their proper places on their sides in the middle. Now time for his head bandage. I just cut off some strips of two millimeter foam and super glued them around the edge. You may be curious as to why Marley has a head wrap, or at least I did until I Googled it. Turns out it was a common practice when a person died in the 1800s to wrap cloth or a kerchief underneath their jaw and tie a knot on the top of their head to keep their mouth shut. Not like they were trying to silence them, but it was like meant to be a more dignified thing to do when someone died than having their slack jaw gaping open at a viewing. Once mine is in place, I carve in some folds to make it look a bit more believable. To do the knot, I loop around some of that same strip and wrap some more around the middle.
For the handle of my door knocker, I decided to just make it out of some 20 millimeter EVA dowel. I super glue it into the mouth and cover up my seam with a couple of layers of four millimeter EVA foam. You could make yours functional by making a pivot or a hinge to go into the mouth. Technically it works as the foam is bendable. You could even put a wood bead or something on the inside at the bottom to make it sound better too. Uh, thoughts for future? I'm just going to go for decorative purposes with mine. <laughs> Time to bathe my build in two layers of Plasti Dip. The paint job for this build was very simple. I start with a dry brush of some copper rub and buff. This chip brush does a good job of making uneven coverage and I purposefully don't push it too much into the crevices. I allow those areas to stay dark. Once covered, I lighten up the copper with some antique gold on some of the high points to make my door knocker fall somewhere in between copper and brass. This will give me some nice color variation and make for a good base for the faux patina I am about to attempt in the next step. Now I'm going to attempt a patina with just some light green and blue acrylic paint. I push it into the cracks and dab it all over the surface, wiping away a majority of it with the paper towel. Think of it like my normal washes I do with black and brown paint watered down, just using a different color. Patina is a chemical process that happens naturally when metal is left to the elements. Metal oxidizes when exposed to air and forms a layer to protect the surface. Using various image references, I'm going to to try and mimic it to the best of my ability. Fingers crossed it works out. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Kind of has a resemblance. I'm sure this is probably what I'm going to end up looking like when I get older. Um, I think it turned out pretty cool. I definitely like that aged metal. I often find myself sometimes just staring at aged things, in particular metal, because of the different colorations and patinas that happen over time. Uh, it's just something that kind of inspires me, especially when I'm getting into paint jobs, which is why I use a lot of rust effects and things like that on some of my props. But I think I did a pretty good job. I've tried to do some kind of brass, copperish patinas before, and I think I'm getting better, definitely. Um, trying to emulate pictures and reference images a little more than just freestyling it, but yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these crotchety old men yourself and impress your friends with your ability to turn a door knocker into something that will probably creep someone out and not want to knock on your door. That wouldn't have been a bad idea. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them...
much props. Um, I guess it's time I gotta go hang this on my door and uh, ward off potential porch pirates, carolers, I don't know, something. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.